Hey, greetings YouTube. Uh, performance reviews where I give you the review and technical tutorials from the technician's point of view. And uh, I really would recommend you bring this to your local vacuum store. They're able to get parts. There are generic companies making parts for these. Uh, but here's an Electrolux, so let's go through it. Well, that filter's no good. Throw that away. Oh. You can see how well these don't filter. Uh, there's the actual model number. In case you had an area stealer in your area or something, you might be able to do something with that. I am not able to do anything with those numbers. And don't think we'll deal with that later off camera. Don't think anybody else is. This is a, known as a 6500 or uh, Electrolux um, 2100 new style. Just if you're looking for parts, that's what they're going to be listed under. Uh, and you know, there's no screws on this machine. This is one of those machines that I've seen a lot of people break because they don't know how to take it apart. So please don't break them. I'm going to give you a tutorial. Here's my tutorial. You know, I was like a lot of people break these because they don't know how to take them apart, right? Well, that's my tutorials. Use a screwdriver and push the rail section out. Now, you notice the logo is missing from this. I don't know where they were, if they were stickers. Usually they say Electrolux on that. So we're gonna do the same side, and if they're stubborn, you can hit it with a hammer. This one's been taken apart a few times. I can tell. It's coming apart nice and easy. Now, for the sake of making things easier, flip it over. This is how this all comes apart. Just take it up on its backside. Nothing here is particularly weird or uh, strange. Uh, again, you can see how well these don't filter. Um, I am going to just take a picture of the wiring for a second in case something's a little bit different or weird. It does have an aftermarket cord winder in there. Again, that's no big deal. Uh, and we'll just pull that all off. Now, when you pull this apart, you got to be careful not to break the cord winder. So what I suggest doing is take a pair of these and you're just holding this and now you see I'm pulling that off. And there you go. Uh, and if you really want and you want to write on there B, W, go for it. Set the cord rewinder by itself. Uh, Next, I'm gonna start, uh, oh, I don't wanna pull that out through the diode. That would be bad. Do not wanna break the diode. We're gonna start pulling things apart. This is different than the older ones used to like sandwich together. This has screws on it. This is a little different than the last one of these I've done, but uh, I've got no qualms about the construction on this. It's just a little, a little different. We'll have to just learn and adapt with that. It's not different as the wiring everywhere. The wiring in these machines has always been a mess. I don't know why they wire them like this. The older Electroluxes were never a mess like these are. These are just a fucking mess inside. And, oh, there we go. And, hoo hoo. Yeah, wh whoever did this is, the engineer, I mean, is just fucking, this is all just a level, a whole level of bullshit uh, in terms of the mess of wiring. And, and I'm calling it bullshit, like I said, this guy can take it apart Electroluxes from the 70s and they're just much more elegant. Um, there's a triple thing here. Uh, man, that just does not want to come apart. I believe what we have here is something that comes apart like this, but again, these all these little brass things are super easy to break. And we're gonna try not to break them. So if you see me struggling here, that's what I'm doing. Holding one, I'm gonna attempt. Oh, this is shit. All right, well, let's not coming apart. Ah. I don't know why this would be, I don't know why anybody would have 
not clean this. I'll have to, this machine came from Aunt Sylvia and I'm thankful to have it, but I have to, I'm gonna have to grill Aunt Sylvia about some of the nastiness of this machine. Oh, that's all right, that stays there. I can spring off to the side. Um, this knob is kind of hard to turn and the reason it's hard to turn is it's so full of dirt. Um, very common that these bellow systems need to main, be maintained. See if we can, what we can pull apart without breaking it. Oh, everything's loose. That's good. Everything is loose. Also, all the screws are kind of the same in here. That's kind of a, a nice thing. I always appreciate when I see that. So, these bellows, take your needle nose and just gently twist and they will pop right off. You need to clean these hoses. That's really important. This machine relies on this mechanical doodad for a lot of things. They could have just made a circuit board, but they didn't. Uh, later models, they would. But this one uh, still has the mechanical doodads in it. And we can see just how dirty this thing is, which will just pop out. Yeah, he just pops out like that. And I'll, uh, I'll take him apart and clean him. So that is what comes apart there. Now there's a sticker in here and it says some logos on it. That should all just pop out. Let's see if I can get this out. Oh, come on, you piece of... You know, somebody recently complained about me cursing in videos. Uh, yeah, it's just part of life, you know? Sometimes you just gotta curse. Anyways, so as you see, I'm pulling all the wiring out without disconnecting it. That is the key to working on Electrolux, is disconnect as few wires as possible. Um, hmm, yummy. That's gross. So this is all gone in the dishwasher. Uh, I'll turn the camera back on when we're assembling this. Through the dishwasher and cleaned up. It's hard to tell. Some of this stuff is just like, like even just scrubbing it, it's just like, this is a dirty machine. I actually ran it twice through the dishwasher. Um, I mean, it is just dirty just scrubbing that. So you're probably gonna see me scrub this once it's together a little bit more thoroughly. Like it is just, Ugh, like I don't know what what's up with it. Um, also, I don't really remember the order of the vacuum hoses. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be fun. Um, anyway, so this guy goes back in, this guy goes in, and when you put this on, that will all, this will all start to line up and make sense when you have it on. And you'll put the little blue knob in last, don't worry about him. We'll take care of him in a bit. Um, so now let's put the cover screws on, which I believe are these all right here. Yeah, everything looks like it's the same screw, so that's a brilliant plus on their part. Um, yeah, it's actually two places for screws. Definitely do these by hand. I'm sure this machine is brittle, more brittle than I want to believe it is. These were loose actually when I took it apart. So I'm happy to be tightening everything up. Uh, you can still get a lot of these parts if you break something. The main body might be the only thing you can't get, but you can get like the switch and the, that sort of stuff. And the, the bellows, my bellows is broken, but I believe I cleaned it out and fixed it. That's boring, I'm not gonna show that on camera. All right, so that's on in one piece. Um, another thing in the mixture is the front panel, which I'll deal with here in a minute. Uh, and this extra bag switch and all that stuff is lovely. Um, but I'm trying to remember, 
All right, so now we're down to, what do we got? Five, six, seven wires to figure out where they go. Right there. Um, I've cleaned out the bellows uh, hoses. Just want to make sure there's no moisture stuck in those. Uh, let's put this thing back together since I, I kind of understand how that goes. Uh, or I may have understood how it went one time. Um, so, and you will have one of these gaskets. This is important. Basically, when you put this together, yeah. And as always, I'm going to pledge get a rag. We're just going to continue our pledge-a-thon of rubber parts. Uh, and this is the same rubber gasket that would have been used in the Super J. Uh, I mean, they really, they really got high mileage out of a lot of these parts. Of course, Europe would not see these. This is would be would Europe would see the uh, the other Electroluxes that are, in my opinion, nicer. Probably don't want to tell the Electrolux aficionados that though. All right, so as you put this in, you guys got to make sure the gasket seats like mine. Yeah, just seats all the way. And there's only um, two out of four places for screws on this. So that's kind of cool. And that just kind of, you can see where the wires are going to go and stuff. Um, all that. Put a little bit of lubrication right there. Um, so yeah, uh, oh, there's a, nope, the date wheel's empty. There's no date wheel there, Never mind. So say we can date it. That would be, I wonder, like when they designed this, I think they thought they originally needed four screws on. They went to two, because my Electrolux 2100 is the same way. Well, I guess if it broke, you could put two more screws in. And then this all goes together. So don't do what I just did and put that in on without the piece. Muy importante. Uh, so wow, I butchered that, sorry. how that goes and we'll put a little bit of grease where it's gonna interface into here to help prevent wear now we got some of this stuff to do all right, we're in the home stretch of putting this bad boy back together. And I just had dinner, it's about 10 o'clock at night, having some IBC root beer. That's the, uh, that's a drink of choice when you're putting together an Electrolux. Uh, so pro tip there, drink root beer when you put together your Electroluxes. Um, anyways, uh, let us, grab the rest of the wires here. Oh. I don't mean to just complain and complain, but I really, I really don't like the way they did the wiring on this particular model. I never have. I've always thought it was very Mickey Mouse and um, it always just kind of sucked. Oh. Yes, this little spring goes in the little spring guide here. Don't break it. Yeah, it always has felt very cheap to me, I guess, the way that these machines were done. Um, they're not particularly ch actually cheap. 
but that's for whatever reason always the impression that they gave me. Uh, so yeah, they, this particular Electrolux just doesn't give me the warm and fuzzies that the ones from my childhood did. Um, oh my. Look at that white wire. All right. It's gonna... So you basically assemble it like this and then you can put this cover on. The other thing that was weird is this is new enough that they used a different motor. So, um, yeah, that's kind of whack. This motor is way whack. Um, it's a high, much higher speed than the traditional Electrolux motor. So I wonder if it will make more suction, but I don't think it does. I really think it's just like a cheap inversion uh, from my memory of this. You know, testing it uh, with a suction gauge. Which is something I would randomly do when machines would come in. Um, so yeah, and it goes in this, uh, this port. Let's see. Yeah. This goes here for now. This goes in this port. And you see this is just gonna all just kind of get into its space now. I'm tempted to silicone the exhaust so that it's airtight. Uh, but I'm gonna run HEPA bags on it, so that seems kind of pointless. All right, that's all. Oh, there we go. Now that the bag check thing is out of the way, all right. That all makes good sense to me how that is. So we got the last two screws before we start fiddling with other things to go in here. Oh, pro tip, don't spill the root beer in the Electrolux, that would be bad. <laughs> okay. So next, we have the cord rewind, which I fucking hate the, I hate this, I hate Electrolux cord rewinds, by the way. I just, they don't have buttons, and they, why do I need to jerk off with my cord rewind? Anyways. On to real talk, real things. So the cord rewind uh, <laughs> it goes in like this, and it normally would nest in the motor, but this is a different version of that machine, so it doesn't do that, which makes things uh, a little bit weird. So how and what goes where? Looking at all this. Well, I have multiple blacks, black wires that is, going here. And I got the, all right, well that, the motor wire, it just goes, we can just connect. It goes right there. That's that's what was in there. They're not double insulated, by the way. I don't know why they're not double insulated. That's always kind of bothered me about this sort of thing. Man, I don't know. The fact that somebody sucked up water with this and didn't zap themselves is amazing the way this machine is made uh, with all these exposed wires. So because I don't like exposed wires, Just to make me feel better, I'm going to put a little bit of electrical tape on there. Uh, and ju judge what you will, but I, I just, then not cool with that. All right, so the next wire, you notice there's just a glued on thing here. Again, that's that was how it came. All right, so the rest, all the whites are just bonded together. It's just like a human centipede, or this is a, I guess it would be a wire, it's a wire centipede of connections here uh, and then your black one would go boom there is black just there and like I said this isn't touching anything so the insulate the 
whether this is double insulated or not really is irrelevant. It's the other ones that worry me when the, they're just floating around in here. Uh, I might eat my words. I might want that lovely uh, bit of wire to be double insulated. We might put some. That might get some electrical tape on it as well. All right. <clears throat> so now there's a couple things we're going to do. Uh, so this has a full bag check switch. So uh, it's probably... Let me, first of all, there's some dust sitting on this from it just sitting in my shop. Uh, let me put this bag in here, first of all. This is the full bag check right here. I'm just trying to to not bypass that. Give me a minute here. This is so I might. I'm gonna do that and we'll turn on. Let me get the cord. All right, there's that. All right, we're gonna. T I just want to try it and make sure everything is. I'm sorry, I had a corrupt file on my SD card. My apologies for these clips not lining up. It would also appear that the frame rate dropped in this next clip, so I'm sorry you can fast forward it. Other Electrolux, by the way, I just oiled those wheel axles. Uh, and that's the thing is the Arius and Electrolux have, they're just not right now. They just haven't been for a few years. And it's one of those things is you can't really put your finger on it, but when you touch and feel them, Oh man, is it obvious. So again, I'm just doing some feel good electrical tape here uh, for me. So I don't need to worry about that. Uh, so I'm just going to go put this on. Uh, and uh, this little guy goes on here. And as you're putting it together, you want to just take up whatever slack there is. I'm going to slam this all together. I say slam. There's no slamming going on here, actually. Uh, and as we put it together, I didn't even check to see the quarter. Everything's just lined up really nicely, actually. Is this not going to fight me? I have had more fights with this style of machine, by the way. Uh, one of my first videos on YouTube of, is of me fighting with one of these. I had to pause the camera because I could not find this thing anywhere. This is the blue knob. Uh, there's a little tab there. He lines up with that. And that's how you know where he goes. And this guy is not a suction control. He is the auto bag check control. The other thing we wanted to do off camera is we just want to, you see how this locks in? Well, that's, that's what holds the filter in. It's not a HEPA filter, but with the HEPA bag plus that, it's better than nothing. Um, certainly not great by today's standards. And then the hose. I wish this machine has a replacement hose on it and some replacement parts that do not color match and it drives me absolutely nuts. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and close that valve. Yep. Well, that's doing all the things. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Give us a follow on Instagram. Uh, if you really love what we're doing, check out our Patreon. If you want to talk more about other things vacuum related, there's the Vacuum Talk Discord. I suggest you check out the link below and have yourself a wonderful day.